In this video, we're going to talk about how we can apply what we've learned about similarity in order to solve a variety of real-world problems. Uh, one type of those problems would be if you're working with scale models or drawings or maps. And, uh, all of those have some type of ratio between the representation, whether it's a flat picture or a 3D representation that has been shrunk down from the actual, whether it's a building, a car, um, a state that you're looking at a map of, uh, and using that ratio as our scale factor to then solve for some missing values. For example, let's say George has a model B-17 bomber airplane. Uh, it's a scale replica of a real flying fortress, that's the name of the B-17 bomber, and the ratio is 1 to 52. If George's model has a wingspan of 2 feet, what is the wingspan of a real B-17 bomber? Um, notice this ratio does not involve any units. That means one of whatever particular unit uh, in the model is equivalent to 52 of whatever that particular unit is in the actual uh, bomber plane. So if I'm talking about inches, one inch to 52. If I'm talking about uh, millimeters, one to 52, right? In this case, I'm talking about feet. So I can set up a proportion if I want to that the model is 1 to 52 on the real thing. So since my model has a wingspan of 2 feet, right, that is going to match up with X uh, on the actual bomber. So 2 feet here. And you can just pretty quickly figure out that the scale factor is times 2. So when I multiply times 2, I see that X equals 104 foot wingspan on the actual bomber. Okay, next, indirect measurement. There are three ways that we can measure things indirectly, uh, meaning it's too hard for us to actually measure the thing itself to get a ruler, to get a tape measure or something right up next to what it is that we want to measure, often because it is too tall or large or too awkward to measure. So we can measure it indirectly using some similar figures. The first method that we're going to talk about is using shadows. So let's say at a certain type of at a certain time of day, the sun is uh, out, that's not covered by clouds, and whatever direction the sun is in and shining down on this building that we want to measure, uh, it's causing the building to cast a shadow. And that shadow is 25 feet long. At that exact same time of day, a five foot tall person is casting a shadow at three feet. Now, first of all, I don't know if you can see it, but what we've created are similar triangles. The reason is both the building and our person, we assume, are standing up at a nice tall right angle, right? And the angle of the sun's rays should be hitting the ground at the exact same angle, should be hitting the building and our person at the exact same angle. And so because our angles are going to be the same, and these angles are going to be the same, we know that we have similar triangles. So we can use these similar triangles to find our missing side length. Uh, again, you can either find a scale factor or you can set up a proportion. In this case, there's not an obvious scale factor to use, so I'm going to make sure to set up a proportion. The height of my building, x, over the shadow of the building, 25, has to equal the height of my person, 5 feet, sorry, this is 25 feet, over the shadow of my person, 3 feet, right? And make sure that you've set everything up and lined uh, up appropriately. So this is my person on the right-hand side. This is my building, right? Across the top, that's the height. And across in the denominators, that's the shadow, right? So things should match up going across. Things should match up within a ratio. You don't want anything trying to match up diagonally. That's been set up incorrectly. So now I need to try to solve this. To me, it looks like the easiest way to solve it is to do it algebraically. Since I have x divided by 25, I can multiply by 25 to cancel that out. But then on the other side, I would also want to multiply by 25. I can't do any simplifying. I'm just going to have to do the math. So x is equal to 125 over 3. But since this is sort of like a word problem, we don't want to leave it an improper fraction. That wouldn't make sense. So when I uh, change this into a mixed number, I'm going to get 3 goes into 4, 3 goes into that once, and 2 fifths sorry, two-thirds left over. So 41 and two-thirds feet would be the height of my building. A second method of indirect measurement involves using a mirror. So uh, this time I have a female person standing up, and here on the ground she is looking into a mirror, 
and what she sees in the mirror is the very top of uh, what I tried to represent, which is a moon tower, just like the one across for the school, um, just across the street. So, right, big tall tower with some lights up here at the top. You can laugh at my drawings all you want to. Um, you want to be looking at the exact top of the mirror because by doing that, we are creating similar triangles. Again, we have nice, tall, standing up straight, right? Our person and our moon tower are both standing up nice and straight and tall. So there's one angle that's the same. Um, and the angle that she is looking at into the mirror and that gaze is being reflected back at the same angle. So these angles are equal. They don't look like it in my picture, but remember, you can't trust pictures. You have to go by what you know. And uh, science tells us that, right, the optics are going to reflect back at the same angle. So uh, because of angle-angle similarity, I know these are similar triangles. Um, in order to find the height of my moon tower, again, I can find a scale factor or I can set up a proportion. Um, the moon tower and the person are going to be my two ratios and I need the height and the shadow. So the height of my moon tower, that's what we're trying to find. The shadow of my moon tower, well I shouldn't say shadow, that's probably actually the wrong word. It's the distance from the mirror in this case. Because that's the other part that's helping us create our uh, similar triangles. So the distance the moon tower is from the mirror is 66 feet. Now for the person, um, this is where it gets tricky. A lot of times in these questions they'll be a little informal and they'll tell you that this person is 5 feet tall. Uh, by the way, can you see that? Five feet tall. Technically, this person's eyeballs are five feet tall, right? Because that's where her gaze is originating from. Um, a lot of times, the question may not be that specific. So if they do just say how tall the person is, then that's the number you're going to have to use. But really, we should be talking about how tall their eyeballs are. Uh, and this uh, lovely lady here, see, she's a girl. She has long, flowing hair. Uh, this lovely lady, her eyeballs are five feet off of the ground. Um, and she is two feet in distance from the mirror. Now from here, I can see I have a scale factor of 33 going from right to left. So I can apply that same scale factor of 33 up in the top. So X is going to equal 5 times 33, which is 165 feet tall. That's how tall our moon tower is, which is kind of cool and also very true because I looked it up. Method number three, uh, in this case, you uh, set out some stakes and you do some surveying in order to find um, distances across large landmarks. In this case, uh, I've tried to draw a lake. And I don't know if you can see the blue outline of our lake, uh, but it would be really difficult to try to measure straight across a lake. Um, so instead, we can set up some stakes and set up some similar triangles to do some indirect measurement. Um, if you can see, I have five little red lines here for some stakes that have been set up. If I want to find the distance across the lake from this stake to this stake, I would need to do a couple of things. One, I would need this kind of intermediate point, and I would need to set up a parallel line segment over here on some solid ground that I could measure this line segment but it would need to be parallel to this line, uh, the line across the lake. And that's where your surveying techniques come in. Um, so we're going to assume that we've done that. The stakes are all in a line. So from this stake to this stake to this stake, this stake to this stake to this stake, those make straight lines that I've kind of represented with dotted lines here. Um, and that helps to create similar triangles. Uh, the reason we know that they're similar is because of angle-angle. Whenever I have two straight lines cross each other, they create matching angles, so I know that. And whenever I uh, have these parallel lines, I can look and find that this angle is going to actually be equal to this angle. So to create the uh, similar triangles, you would have to take this one and kind of turn it about this center stake. You're going to take this one and rotate it around in order for it to be turned the same direction um, as this larger triangle. How about we label it to make it a little bit easier? If this triangle is triangle ABC, my center stake here is letter C, I'm not going to give it a different letter. I'm going to call this uh, D and E here. Triangle ABC 
that I create there is going to be similar to triangle what? Well, notice A and D are the ones that don't have any markings right now, so D is going to match up with A. Angle B has the double markings just like angle E does, and C is similar to itself. So triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEC. Now I can set up some uh, a proportion here, some ratios of corresponding side lengths. <clears throat> the side that I am missing, the distance across the lake, is corresponding with this side right here that we marked out between the stage parallel. Okay, so if I'm comparing the missing side length to that 25 meters, right? All right, and I need the other pair of corresponding side lengths to create another ratio. That's going to be these two side lengths. And that's kind of unusual because those two side lengths are actually in a line with each other. They connect to make this line AD. But in my similar triangles, A corresponds, sorry, AC corresponds with CD. So I've got 30 meters here and 10 meters here. Um, which one of those needs to go across from the X? Well, X is my missing side length from the lake, and 30 meters is part of that same triangle. So that's going to go up top. 10 meters is part of the same triangle as my 25, so the 10 meters comes down here at the bottom. Um, now I just need to figure out what X is. Uh, you can solve this algebraically. You can reduce this fraction. But I also see that there is a scale factor of times 3 being applied from denominator up to numerator. So I can apply that in this case and find that x is 25 times 3, which is 75 meters. All right, now it's time for you to do a couple of do now problems. So in order for you to see all of them, I'm going to just go out. So write your do now. Move it up. I can squeeze in all of the writing. Pause now and take note and figure this out. All right, so let's see. If my map has a legend showing me one centimeter is equal to two miles, and in real life uh, a certain road is seven and a half miles long, then how long would it be in the map? So set up your proportion, right? One centimeter to two miles has to equal, we don't know what, to 7.5 miles. Now, while we would never want to leave a decimal or a fraction inside another fraction as a final answer, doing it in your work is totally fine. Um, you can solve this algebraically if you want to and multiply both sides by 7.5. So that means that x would equal 1 over 2 times 7.5, which is going to equal 3.75. And I know from my proportion that it's going to have to be 3.5 sorry, 3.75 centimeters, because we're talking about a distance in the map. Now for Aaliyah measuring her tree, if you want, you can draw a picture. And if you want to draw a happy picture of a tree, that's fine. Or you can just draw the basics, right? You have, let's see, put the whole question on there. You have a tree, and it is, we don't know how tall, and it casts a 12-foot shadow. And at the same time, Little sister is two and three fourths foot tall and costs a two foot shadow. So even if you don't want to draw the picture of the tree, organizing your measurements like this may help you to set up your proportion because it's a little bit easier to see here, right? I mean, if you want to complete the triangles, you certainly can. But x over 12 is going to have to equal two and three fourths over two. If you would rather make this 2.75 in the middle of your work, that's fine, but don't be afraid of working with your fractions. Uh, again, there are lots of ways of figuring this out. I should be labeling all of this, though. These are all feet. And 2 times 6 gives me 12. So 2 and 3 fourths times 6 should give me x. So x has to equal 2 and 3 fourths times 6. In order to multiply this mixed number times 6, I'm going to change it to an improper fraction times 6, or 6 over 1. I guess it would help if you could see that. These are going to simplify. That's 33 over 2. Since this is basically a word problem, we should change that. That is 16 and 1 half feet.